Hey everyone, this is Josh with a great cryptography tutorial for you today. Today we're getting random. And no, I'm not talking about wearing hats inside out and other silly things people do that we think are random. We're talking about the computer science topic of entropy. We need random numbers a lot every time we get on our modern computing devices. Uh, to secure our encryption, we need good sources of random numbers for things like keys and nonces in order for these algorithms to work correctly. Computers and people are not actually very good at randomness. We're very predictable, as are our computing devices that do every single instruction that you tell them in a very predictable way. So we have to engineer entropy in a smart way that's statistically random in order for our modern encryption to be safe and usable. So let's talk about how we generate random numbers using computers. The first thing we need to talk about is sort of the concept of randomness. What actually is randomness in, in a useful sense, in an applied sense for this topic? There are some things in the universe that, by the laws of physics that I don't understand, are said to be truly random. Things like the behavior of particles in radioactive decay. However, these true random sources are not a practical way to generate random numbers for computers. I mean, imagine if we all had to carry around radioactive elements and worry about our uh, true RNGs breaking in some way that rendered our encryption unsafe. So we use what are called cryptographically secure pseudo-random number generators on a day-to-day -day basis. These functions are indeed pseudo-random, they're not true random, but they provide a statistically random source for our use. Meaning that if you just generate a bunch of random numbers, the distribution of numbers is going to be uh, statistically unpredictable. You know, I'm not a mathematician or like a really heavy mathematical cryptographer, but this is the general idea of what we need. If we generate a bunch of random numbers, we don't want to see any pattern in the numbers that our random function gives. If there was some sort of predictability, it would be easier for our adversaries to break our encryption keys. So we use a mechanism uh, with these functions that I kind of like to think of as seed and feed. We're going to collect a bunch of environmental data, as random as we can possibly get it in a practical sense, and feed that to cryptographic functions that will mix this data and give us this statistically unpredictable distribution of random numbers. How do we get seed data? There's a bunch of different mechanisms we can use to seed our PRNGs. There's things like physical sensors. For example, most of our phones have accelerometers in them, shake sensors. Uh, we can use that as a seed source. There's some unpredictability in the way that we move and the accuracy of how those sensors measure our movement. We can use things like key press timings, right? People don't perfectly press the keys in uh, sync every single time. Many modern operating systems use this as a source of seed data. We can use camera noise. Camera sensors are imperfect, and so the way they sense environmental noise in the light can be mixed up and used as a random source. Uh, a famous example of this is Cloudflare's lava lamp farm that they use to help seed their PRNGs. Even uh, operations that are known to be physically unpredictable, like dice rolls. So I have a couple example demos sort of demonstrating these concepts uh, on the Chain Tutorials GitHub and website that you can view. One is called Entropal, and Entropal is a tool that allows you to generate uh, diceware passwords using dice rolls. And uh, if you use a two or, or uh, sorry, a four or eight sided die, it shows you the exact bits that you're generating. A four sided die gives you two bits of entropy for a roll, an eight-sided die gives you three bits of entropy per roll. You can, of course, use a regular six-sided die for this as well, but I think it's a little bit harder to understand the bits because it gives you like a fractional amount of entropy per roll. Another example is uh, an entropy collector that uses an accelerometer sensor. So this is something where it detects all the movement, it takes a bunch of samples, and feeds it to a cryptographic function to give you random outputs. Now, these are not necessarily production-ready examples, 
but they show this concept of how we can use all sorts of different, fairly unpredictable sources to seed our pseudo-random number generators. Now, once we have this seed data and we keep refreshing this seed data with new uh, information that we're collecting, uh, how do we get usable bits out of it? Well, we use uh, cryptographic functions such as block ciphers. So for example, the uh, Fortuna production PRNG uh, uses block ciphers that are used in encryption. So for example, AES, 2FISH, etc. And you generally use this in something called counter mode. We're not going to get into all the nuances of different block cipher modes. This isn't something that I fully understand yet. I'm always learning these new concepts. But the general idea is every time you feed data into a block cipher like this, you get bits uh, out the other end that are not predictable in any way. So if you have the bits that come out on the other end, there's no way to tell what the input seed information was. This is the same with hash functions, uh, cryptographically secure hash functions, I should say, like SHA-2 and SHA-3. These are just examples of ways that you can take in seed data and get data out the other end that is statistically unpredictable, right? If you have a SHA-2 hash of something, there's no way to tell looking at the output bits what the input was. You can't go backwards. And there's no predictability in the sense that if you change one or two bits of the input, the seed data, the output will look totally different. So the general way that these crypto secure PRNGs work is you're constantly feeding them new C data from your key press timings, uh, from your accelerometer input, from your dice rolls if you're trying to generate a key that's very important to you and you want to do it physically yourself. And you get out bits on the other end that you can't predict from that. And though that stream of output bits is constantly changing in a way that statistically you can't gain any information from. So again, why do we need to do all this? Why is there such a, a deep science to entropy? Well, again, our modern encryption relies very heavily on random values for things such as keys. There's a principle in uh, cryptography, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly, called uh, Kirchhoff's principle, which is you should be able to know everything about how a crypto system works, for example, encryption, uh, except for the secret key and not be able to break the encryption. Right, So we're not relying on our adversary not knowing uh, how our encryption system works. We're only relying on them not being able to guess our secret encryption key. So we must have good sources of random numbers for these encryption operations. If our adversary in any way can start to predict the keys that we're using for our encryption or for our Bitcoin private keys, uh, they can start to break that crypto system. And so in order for us to avoid leaking our private information or losing our money, we have to make sure we have those good keys. You know, there are other types of random number generators out there or things like hash functions which are statistically predictable. For example, the built-in random function in most programming languages is not suitable for cryptographic use. Uh, if you start to get a bunch of random numbers from that, you can predict what the next random numbers might be. Whereas the cryptographically secure sources like os.urandom and Python are not statistically predictable. They're suitable for generating encryption keys. Uh, randomness is something that's really easy to get wrong if you're trying to roll your own. So in these examples that I've made, you know, they're meant to be educational demos. But there may be some flaw. There very likely is some flaw, being an amateur cryptographer and computer scientist myself, uh, that renders them unsuitable for generating really important keys. As we often say in crypto, don't roll your own crypto. Trust professionals and use sources that are known uh, and well-respected in the community for your random number generation. But I think it's incredibly fascinating to dig in and learn how these systems work. We use and rely on cryptography every single day for our own data. And so learning a little bit about how this actually works, uh, you know, underneath the hood, I think is really interesting. 
and I hope you found this tutorial interesting and informative. If you have more questions about randomness, be sure to look up information online, ask questions, and as always, stay fascinated.